Did you know that the average smartphone is now 5.5 inches, too large for the average woman to use one-handed? That Google's speech recognition software is 70% more likely to accurately recognise male speech than female speech. I have a bit of a problem with the term gender neutral, because the reality is, when we say gender neutral, we don't actually mean for men and women. We tend to mean designed for men, and the women can just kind of slot in if they can find a way to fit. The problem is, we often don't. The average smartphone is now 5.5 inches, and while we're admittedly all extremely impressed by the size of your screen, it's a different matter when it comes into fitting it into the hands of half the population, not to mention minuscule or non-existent pockets, or pockets that are sewn up, which is just the devil's work. The average man can fairly comfortably use his device one-handed, but the average woman's hand is not much bigger than the device itself. This is obviously annoying, and foolish for a company like Apple, given that research shows that women are more likely to own an iPhone than men. The smaller handsets, such as the iPhone SE, are notably inferior, no longer update, or have been discontinued. One even had inbuilt airbrushing. One solution that's been proposed to deal with the how big is your smartphone measuring contest is voice recognition software. The problem is, that doesn't really work very well for women either. Voice recognition technology is trained on large databases of voice recordings called corpora, and these are heavily dominated by male voices. The problem with that is that algorithms don't just reflect our biases back to us, they amplify them, and by a significant amount. In 2017, the University of Washington conducted a study looking at algorithms trained on image datasets. In the particular dataset they used, they found that pictures of cooking were 33% more likely to include women than men. But by the time the algorithm was done being trained on this dataset, the disparity had increased to 68%. What did that mean? It meant that the algorithm was labelling pictures of men as female just because they were standing in front of a stove. What that means for the voice algorithms is that if you start off training your speech recognition software on a 70% male database, by the time you get to releasing that algorithm into the wild, where women do actually exist, you won't be recognising female voices at all. But it's not just about databases, it's also about the knowledge that we as people have. And what this means is that if you have a design team that is heavily dominated by men, let's say, maybe white men from America, there are going to be gaps in their knowledge that they just simply won't have thought of when they're coding their product. For example, when Apple launched their AI, Siri, she, ironically, could find you prostitutes and Viagra, but she couldn't find you abortion providers. Siri could help you if you'd had a heart attack, presumably if you had male heart attack symptoms, but if you told Siri, I have been raped, Siri would say, I don't understand what you mean by raped. Similarly, when Apple introduced their health tracker app with much fanfare in 2014, claiming it was a comprehensive health tracker app, you could track your blood pressure, you could track your molybdenum, you could track your copper intake, who does that? But you couldn't track your period. A period which is one of the vital signs for female bodies is important for determining health as blood pressure or uh, heart rate. These are basic errors that surely would have been caught by a team that had enough women on it. That is, by a team without a gender data gap. And what's really important about this is to recognise that what we're talking about here is biases and gaps in our knowledge. There is no way that the team at Apple deliberately sought to exclude women, deliberately sought to offend rape survivors. They just didn't think of it. From smartwatches that are too big for women's wrists, to map apps that assume everyone just wants the fastest route and no one cares about the safest route, to sex apps that measure how good you are at sex with names like eye thrust and eye bang, and yes, the inbuilt assumptions of what good sex is are pretty much what those sound like. The tech industry is rife with examples of supposedly gender neutral tech that has simply forgotten that women exist.